Oppo's $3,500 Mixed Reality Headset versus Meta's $500 Mixed Reality Headset. Which one should you go for? This question popped in my head right after Mark Zuckerberg issued a statement saying, After using it, I don't just think that Quest is the better value. I think the Quest is the better product, period. And since I happen to have both of them at the moment, let's find out which one's actually better, shall we? So up until a few months ago, the MetaQuest 3 was everyone's favorite headset. And why wouldn't it be? From a much more powerful processor to a sharper display and full color pass through, the Quest 3 was a massive upgrade over the MetaQuest 2. And then this guy comes along, costing seven times more and promising entirely new ways to work and play. Starting with the design and build, the Apple Vision Pro is really, really impressive. It has an all aluminium build, a plastic plus glass front and a modular design, all of which feel extremely well built and high end. The MetaQuest 3 being the affordable one has sort of a plasticky build, but for something that sits on your face every time you use it, I will not complain about the plastic bit at all because it really helps bring the weight down. So yeah, I could comfortably wear the Quest 3 for longer hours, but I would pretty much be done with the Vision Pro after two hours or so. So even though the Vision Pro's design is great and all, I will choose comfort over looks, in which case the MetaQuest 3 was better for me. Okay, moving on, let's talk about the work side of things first, aka productivity. So first of all, I have to put it out there, the quality of visuals on the Apple Vision Pro is just amazing. It's crisp and feels almost natural, whereas looking through MetaQuest 3 can feel like looking at a 480p screen. Then again, you can get 7 MetaQuests for the price of one Apple Vision Pro, so I can let that slide. You will also need to use pinch and swipe gestures to operate the Vision Pro, by the way, whereas like with every other VR headset, you get a set of controllers with the MetaQuest 3. And I am not actually going to choose which method is better because both have their pros and cons. Apple's gesture control is a very intuitive way of controlling the headset and it works almost flawlessly like 9 out of 10 times. Whereas having controllers is a different experience altogether. You can experience the haptics while operating it and it's just easier. Anyway, Apple has a very unique approach to productivity. You can either download special apps designed for the Vision Pro from the App Store or you have the option to download over a million iPad apps compatible with this guy or you can connect your MacBook and turn this into a giant 4K display. And thanks to the powerful M2 chip, the Vision Pro is able to process as many windows or tabs as you would like. For instance, I can connect my MacBook and edit videos on it while having multiple browser tabs, notes, documents, files and whatnot open on the side. This is like a dream come true for workaholics like me. And the best part is there is no delay of any sorts, although right now the Vision Pro only lets me have one external screen for my MacBook. Uh, there's actually already a third-party solution for sharing two Mac displays, but it's simply not as reliable as I'd like. Something tells me it's a matter of when and not if the Vision Pro will let me add a second Mac display, but uh, let's see how things go. Now, working on the MetaQuest 3 is a completely different ordeal. And the immediate downgrade in the video pass-through quality after jumping from the Vision Pro to the Quest 3 is something I haven't been able to shake off. It's uh, more than good enough for getting a general overview of your surroundings, but it's a little too low-res and grainy and also a bit distorted in comparison. The Quest 3 also has a couple of cameras on the outside to track your hands on all for all sorts of actions although it's utterly wonky for me to actually rely on it. Having controllers does make it easier somehow, but I'm still not a fan of how careful it has me be so that I don't mistype or press the wrong button and stuff like that. That reminds me, the Quest 3's controllers also have really nice haptics, which is entirely missing on the Vision Pro, by the way. So not only do these controllers let me type at a much faster speed than Apple's bare-bone floating keyboard, but that added depth with the haptics on the Quest 3 is something I really appreciate as well. As for the app situation, the Quest 3 simply does not have as extensive a library of standalone apps, not games, 
designed explicitly for this thing as Apple's special computer, but it does have a few necessary apps like Netflix and YouTube, unlike the Vision Pro, which I really appreciate. You can also connect your laptop to the Quest 3 and mirror it on a bigger display and create your own work setup. But then again, the quality is not as good. I tried editing one of my videos on it and nope, it did not look good. I'll be the first one to admit that this third-party app called Immersed works amazingly well for multi-monitor setup on the Meta Quest 3 and you can get a lot productive. But all things considered, the Vision Pro actually has a definite edge as far as productivity goes. Apple's approach to Vision OS, its app library, which will positively get better over time, and the whole ecosystem thing is a major plus for the Apple Vision Pro. But it's a complete opposite on the gaming front. But that's to be expected since the Quest lineup of headsets always have been about gaming. So be it the sheer selection of games or the um, easier or more intuitive set of controls, the Quest 3 is a better gaming machine by a long shot. And I can dance and also kind of work out my way through the world of Beat Saber, duel it out in Blast On, refine my ping pong skills in 11 Table Tennis, which has a mixed reality option now too, or even experience a few AAA titles like Assassin's Creed. Nexus. I can even stream my PC's VR games to the Quest 3 if I want, which is just so cool. I do have to let you know that even though gaming is a fun experience on the Quest 3, playing games with a lot of motion can cause VR motion sickness, so I strictly stayed away from gaming on the Quest 3 for more than one hour. The Apple Vision Pro did not make me nauseous even after like two hours of use, although the gaming possibilities on it are strictly, strictly limited from a limited number of games to the pin gesture control. It's not the most intuitive experience in gaming on this thing. But when it comes to entertainment, it's the Vision Pro for me. Purely because it has a much superior display compared to what the Quest 3 is working with. It's got a 4K micro OLED panel for each eye, which is notably sharper and has better image quality in every way that you can imagine. I wish the field of view was a little wider, but um, I kind of adjusted to it after a while. And not to mention, the speakers on the Vision Pro are amazing. Its speakers also sound fuller and more detailed, so yeah, the Vision Pro makes for a fantastic portable personal television. There's uh, currently no way to enjoy 360 and VR videos on this thing, yes, but hopefully that all changes once the official YouTube app for the Vision Pro eventually rolls out. On the MetaQuest 3, the speakers are just okay, like they just get the job done. I found the battery life on both to be very similar. It was around 2.5 hours on both depending on what I was doing and with the 18 watt charger that's included in the box, the Quest 3 charges in like 2 hours and 15 minutes while the Vision Pro with its 30 watt charger fills up slightly faster. Okay, so that was all for my experience with the Apple Vision Pro and the Meta Quest 3. And I hope this video has been helpful to you in order to illustrate all the pros and cons of both these headsets. The Vision Pro is obviously the superior system of the two in most cases, but the Quest 3 is a seriously impressive VR headset in its own right too. Especially considering all its gaming potential and the undeniable fact that it's so much more affordable. It's also a more mature product in general, although it will be super interesting to see how Apple evolves the Vision Pro as a standalone device and as a computing platform in the coming days as well. So everyone, that was all for this video. I hope you liked it and if you did, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We will be coming up with such interesting interesting content in the future as well. So do subscribe. It's me Pratima Adhikari taking your leave. Thank you so much for watching.